uh, almost gone, so we will officially call the meeting to order. Uh, this is the uh, March, excuse me, the May 23rd, 2018 uh, work session of the town board. <clears throat> we'll let the minutes reflect that uh, Mr. Moore is absent uh, this evening. Uh, we have a number of members of staff. Thank you for staff. And we have a distinguished audience. Um, and uh, with that, we will uh, move on. We have the minutes of May 9th, 2018 before us. But we'll entertain a motion of approval for those minutes. I move. I second. We move and uh, second it. Any discussion about the minutes? Comments? Otherwise? All right, the minutes will stand up. Oh. We'll go back to, uh, yes, a roll call vote for the minutes. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Uh, carried. Uh, monthly reports, uh, nothing new to report uh, for them. We have no public hearings this evening. We do have one guest, uh, and uh, Mr. Philippone is uh, joining us. Please come to the table. And um, I'll ask Mr. Valentine to uh, add a few more comments uh, for this uh, first matter. Thank you. Uh, see, Mr. Philippone is the uh, developer of the Crown Point subdivision along Point Road and Shoecraft Road. Um, it is in the third or fourth phase of that development, and as part of it, um, he's installed some sidewalks. Um, previously had a, a sidewalk waiver, and I have the original sidewalk waiver uh, letter from 2006 uh, that came through, but he brought up or highlighted uh, one small portion of that stubs to a cul-de-sac that he was looking to get a waiver for and didn't uh, think that was necessary to construct. Um, I think he passed out an overall plan kind of showing the overall layout of the subdivision. Um, he's installed the sidewalks along uh, Plank Road, which is part of the original consideration as well as kind of the inside loop. Um, he's got his piece here kind of highlighted up on the map uh, up on the wall showing the green is the piece along Plank Road. The green is kind of the internal loop and then that basically two lot little stub into the cul-de-sac is the piece he was looking to get a waiver for. Steve, I don't know so, if anything else to... Um, you know, I did a little uh, background history on... And this is... And, on and the letter the, that I that I dropped off to everybody here just for, before the meeting For started. the record, and it's 2018? Two th yes. Okay. Oh, 2018, yes. Just want, no, I just want to make sure as, as part of the record is correct. So. Yes, okay. thank you. Yep, absolutely. Um... So I highlighted a couple of points with regard to some reasons why we were looking to uh, abandon this one small section of sidewalk. The section of sidewalk uh, would serve barely two homes um, on the cul-de-sac. It's generally unlikely that someone in the cul-de-sac would walk across the street to get on that small piece of sidewalk to then cross the street to get on the sidewalk that is part of the inside loop there. Um, the cost benefit for that sidewalk it's you know it's three thousand dollars maybe a little bit more and it would serve very few people it's really not a good idea cost wise um and we've already completed you know a long plank road 1760 square feet of sidewalk roughly between what we did in phase one <coughs> and what mark and i both highlighted in our respective maps for phase 2b um which is um you know, a significant amount of sidewalk it's almost a third of a mile on plank road um, and we're going to be tidying that up as far as um, topsoiling and seating and all that good stuff now that I've got the contractor back and we've got some more than three sunny days in a row. Um, and um, so we, you know, we thought it wouldn't detract in any way from the subdivision or the, the people that live there or the general public by eliminating that. Um, we'd like to put that money into you know, additional plantings on our berms and things like that to make the area along Plank Road a little bit better. Um, we suffered a lot of storm damage um, on the trees that we were trying to save along Plank Road. They just keep going over like dominoes every time we get these crazy wind storms. So, you know, we're hoping to better use funds towards that than towards a sidewalk that probably wouldn't get a tremendous amount of use. This map is very helpful. So it appears that in the subdivision there is um, sidewalk, you know, continuous sidewalk all the way through for pedestrians. And then on one side, um, leading into the cul-de-sac mm -hmm. sidewalks. So essentially it's, you know, it's a complete loop and you're just looking to eliminate that small piece on the other side where, of, mm -hmm. where there is sidewalk directly across from it. Correct. It's 
really, I think, the only non-contiguous part of sidewalk within the development. Well, wait a minute, Paul. So there's not a sidewalk. That's well, this, okay. this, this is he previously had a sidewalk waiver from this board in 2006 okay. that right. basically said he had to do sidewalks along Plank Road right. as well as one side internally. Oh, so he's right. been okay. on the inside loop of the one side internally. Oh, um, yeah, I see where the double Kind of see on the, yeah. the map there. Um, so this is kind of an offshoot of that um, section 3B. Yeah, we, we kind of took just starting development or we're starting Cut up the thing. sections because yeah. the engineer at the time made these sections really big and, mm -hmm. you know, with a, a, we didn't want to do 30 lot sections at a time right. in the midst okay. of a recession. Just sitting on developed lots wasn't a good idea. All right, so it ends at 213? Is that what it is? It ends and you just don't have the Calder set? It ends at 218, yes. Well, 220 yeah. the sidewalk would 220, end. yes. It ends at 220 and then across the street is lot 219 oh, and 218. You don't mind helping out the larger map down here. If you have yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. By the way, the caller site doesn't have sidewalks. So. I forgot my glasses. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So that's why I highlighted oh, the, okay. the yellow, which is sidewalk. Right. This is actually going in. They actually, I don't know if you saw, but we boxed out this. Yep. They're going to be pouring that. We did the main section along Plank Road right. last mm -hmm. fall. Right. We finished that shoe craft. So I, I'm not in favor of the waiver. Um, you know, I think for just continuity, having the sidewalk on all streets internally makes sense. Also, I I don't necessarily just buy the, the the only usage would be from those two homes. I mean, anyone who is out in the neighborhood walking that night may walk right across the street and down to the cul-de-sac and back around. I mean, I'm just thinking about my family, and that's yeah. probably what we would do. So. Um, you know, I, I'm not in favor of granting the waiver uh, just because as I'm looking at this, it, it, not a week goes by where I'm running into somebody who asks, why are there sidewalks on this street, not sidewalks on this street, or in this neighborhood and not at the rest of this neighborhood? And so I, I mean, it just, it doesn't make sense. I mean, we've been, over the last year, I think, been getting a lot of different waiver requests from application or from developers on your sidewalks or some other part of a, of a development that's already been approved either by us or by a previous board and it's starting to frustrate me honestly that there's all these different people coming back after the fact saying well now I own it or now I would like to not have the sidewalk or whatever it may be so you know I think granting the waiver on both sides makes sense um, so I would be in favor, of, I'm not in favor of the waiver, and I think, you know, sidewalk down to the end. Um, for no other reason than uniformity within the subdivision makes sense to me, so. What was the first waiver uh, that the we already granted? First waiver was uh, sidewalks on one side internally for sections one, two, and three. So this is section two. Three is, is pending okay. construction right now, kind of the lower part of that loop. Uh, mm -hmm. Section 1 is already in. Right. Sidewalks are to be installed on the south side of Plank Road for all property frontage in the project. Um, no sidewalks on, he's, he's got one corner lot on Shoecraft. Mm -hmm. um, and then there was a waiver granted for the future section 4, which is Garden Hill, and I don't right. know if it, the, I, it shows that's kind of the stub at the end of uh, Christine Circle and Garden Hill. And there's no sidewalks in that neighborhood right now? There is not. And, and, I think that's, that was, and that makes sense. That was I mean, the thought was not use to, of the waiver, I believe. Add them into the back of the subdivision when there's nothing in the front. So, uh, so this was just the one piece that. Um, Do you have any recommendations from PRC on this? Um, I see, PRC was kind of indifferent to it. Um, you know, one way or the other. You know, there was pluses and minuses on on both ends. Um, you know, Steve approached me about it, and I said, you know, obviously there was a, already a waiver granted by this board, so therefore, all waivers need to go back. So mm -hmm. that's why we just. Uh, wanted to bring him in as a guest to discuss it, um, have him share his his thoughts on it. And I'm okay with it. I don't know. I, it's, I, don't, I don't see that as that um, essential to have the sidewalk considering the rest of it. Yeah, I could go for it. It's a big deal. Okay, so I'd like to uh, make a make a motion for the waiver. Um, I move that we grant the um, applicant's request 
Plank Road development for a waiver as set forth in the May 23rd, 2018 letter. A second. Um, moved and seconded. Uh, any further discussion that uh, we haven't already had, uh, staff? Uh, I just want to clarify, depending on which way it goes, typically a waiver includes a $500 fee for those two lots, just what the, board's, what the board's thoughts are on if mm -hmm. the waiver is granted, if that's mm -hmm. under consideration or not. Yeah, so. yeah I, w I was assuming that that was the yeah, I just, just wanted to clarify that the, the yeah. part of it, so it would be two lots, so it would yeah. be... Yeah. I'll, I'll amend the motion yeah, yeah. to include... Um, <laughs> It's a one and a half. At the condition of the $500 <laughs> fee. Okay. Second. All right. Thank you, Mark. Uh, staff, uh, any other uh, comments or input that uh, isn't part of the record uh, right now that uh, you believe should be part of the record? All right. Board, any additional comments? Okay. Uh, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Okay. So this carries 3-1. Okay, we'll move on to uh, the next uh, the next item. Thank you. Thank you very much. For your time and consideration. Okay. Thank you. Have a good evening. You too. Thanks. Uh, we'll move on to our action items, and our first action item is uh, review of the bids uh, of the DPW pole barn uh, that came in last week. And uh, Mr. Uh, Tate uh, has got uh, package of materials uh, for us. Okay, great. All right. Okay, Mr. Uh, Mr. Tate. Thank you. Um, as we met a few weeks ago, uh, we you know, discussed that we were going to go out for bid for the pole barn, and we got the grant money through Senator Funky's office. Uh, we did have that bid opening this past Friday, and the bids came in. Um, as you can see on here, C Core Building Solutions was the lowest bidder. We did have a uh, pre bid meeting on site so that any interested bidders and contractors could see kind of where exactly we were thinking for the building. They could see what's around, um, how they'd be able to access the site, um, you know, what they had for utilities, given that we had a stakeout called in when we knocked the old barn down. Uh, they were present for that and even had a few uh, kind of follow up phone calls with us. So they should be fully aware of kind of everything that was going into it. Um, you know, and have a, a good understanding of what our intent was. Um, so I felt comfortable with their number and, and given their kind of understanding of the bid specs. Okay. So um, if the board were to move forward uh, with this <coughs> and uh, we would look uh, to do a resolution at our next meeting, which would be legislative session, would be June 6th. Uh, what is a timing? Uh, give the board an idea of what the timing might look like uh, they, for for the uh, project. For how soon they can start construction? Start, uh, and, start and finish. So we talk to them, and while they don't know ex the exact start date, um, they they do know that you know as part of the bid specs, we want them to at least start ordering the materials within 14 days of awarding the contract to them they're going to kind of get right on that and hopefully start within a month, give or take, um, with the intent that it's completed by September um, or, before. or before with the intent that we'll be able to use it um, you know, if the weather kind of turns sooner and later and, and even going into the fall. Can you remind me again the um, amount of the grant that was secured by Senator Funky? The grant that we got uh, through Senator Funky was for 129000 So we do have we do have uh, monies that uh, as part of our um, building uh, and facilities uh, budget line that uh, that we have uh, set aside uh, that uh, you know can uh, go into maintenance or other uh, aspects of uh, construction. So we would look uh, to do the difference uh, from that uh, from that line item. The only item that we have uh, taken from that uh, for this year has been uh, the roof at uh, uh, Penfield Community Center, uh, which we completed last uh, last week. Uh, so so with, 
with the grant, then um, the remaining um, funds, which aren't that much, um, are already budgeted for in the 2018 budget. We have, we have money in the 2018 budget for it, correct. Which we kind of anticipated the number being slightly higher uh, when we originally put in for the, the grant. It didn't include uh, things as a concrete slab uh, or some of the kind of exterior uh, you know, block work to make it a little nicer and more attractive in the building, um, given and, that it's going to be consistent out front. The, yeah. Consistent yep. with the sewer operations yep. facility. Yep. So is it your recommendation that we go with the lowest bid? Yes. Yep. So out of the three that uh, that bid, uh, what uh, what two came uh, to actually view the site and uh, Finger Lakes and Secor Building Solutions were the two contractors that showed up. bid for the project from Seacorp Building Solutions and that a resolution be drafted for us sure. for uh, September for uh, June 6th <laughs> yeah. you got September stuff. don't wish the summer I'll second that all right we moved and seconded uh, any any additional questions <clears throat> questions or comment uh, from the board That's good, job. good job on that Anything, uh, Eric, additionally that uh, you feel should be part of the record? Uh, for this? Okay. Great. Um, the move and seconded. Uh, those in favor, aye. Uh, opposed? Uh, four and all. That uh, carries. Uh, thank you, Eric. Appreciate it. We'll next, <clears throat> we'll next move on to 78 White Spire Lane Hold Harmless Agreement request. Uh, Mr. Ballant. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, had a resident at uh, 78 White Spire come in and is looking to install a fence on his yard. Uh, White Spire is kind of the lower section of Cranberry Cove uh, development off of 250. Um, his house uh, backs up to a storm sewer easement we have running along the backyard. So if you look at the map, it has a catch basin on the north, a catch basin on the south. There is a pipe running through there. So he's looking for a fence over the top of our pipe. Um, I spoke with him about it, um, explained if he does get a hold harmless agreement, you know, we've obviously got the rights to come in there, maintain the pipe as needed. Um, we also asked people in those areas to hand dig around the pipe just to make sure they're not impacting it um, in that area. He said he understood, um, you know, he has kids and just looking to, you know, fence the yard for children. I think in the little corner he sketched in the cop possible location for a future shed. Um, I'm not supportive of having a, a physical structure because there is kind of an, mm -hmm. an odd little corner in there. Um, he didn't ask for that, but figured if it's before the board asked the question and then we can you know, pass that along. But I think he was anticipating a shed back there and um, I don't think staff's supportive of having a physical structure in our easement, um, but a fence obviously we can work around and if you gotta remove a section of it, um, yeah. you know, typically that's easy enough. Yeah, I would suggest that if the board, the rest of the board agrees that you pass along to the resident just the reasons why that would not be a good placement for the shed and also certainly to talk to their neighbors about the fence going in so we don't have any problems. Yep, yeah, yeah, and yeah. the neighbor on one side has a fence already. You can show it, see it's uh, slightly yeah, off the property the line, so his neighbor fence. to the east is, uh -huh. um, has a fence on their property. Okay. Um, so say consistent with the neighborhood but there are some fences out there already mm -hmm. okay all right um, this is uh, consistent with what we have done uh, with the uh, standard wording about um, you know uh, their, their responsibility if uh, we go in uh, take it down or we'll take it down but uh, we don't uh, put it uh, back up 100% responsible for that and uh, obviously not to block any, you know, drainage or anything like that. Yep, I think it's why you should angle. Is, again, we wouldn't want that <coughs> over top of the catch basin. That, that northern yep. corner, he's kind of cheating it in so it's not physically over top of the, the grate. So we can pull the grate off and, it's, you know, not stuck down, yep. you know, if we ever had to get into removal blockage. Okay. All right. Okay. We're comfortable uh, with that. Uh, entertain a motion of approval for uh, the whole harmless agreement. I'll move that we grant the whole harmless agreement. Okay, I've been moved, seconded. Second. 
for the thank you. Uh, further discussion, board, anything additional uh, that uh, was not part of the record should be added. Okay, I'm moved and second. Those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? No. no. Uh, we move to item C, 2150 Fairport, Nine Mile Point Road. This is a conditional <coughs> use permit. The restaurant, uh, Mr. Cheng, uh, came in uh, regarding that restaurant. Uh, Mr. Costello. Thank you, Tony. Uh, Mr. Chen did come in that the evening of the uh, 16th, and his comment was he was opening up a Cambodian type restaurant, uh, similar to the Soup Spoon. He's got between 15 and 20 people proceeding with takeout service. He has three to five employees at any time on the site, and his hours of operation are generally from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, he does own the property. He's responsible for dumpster locations and maintenance and all that business. So, other than that. Um, and signage. Mm -hmm. The signage will be consistent with what's already there. Yeah, he's not having a drive through, so no drive through. It all sounds good, yeah. clear. And we had his son in here before. Thank you. Right. Work session. <laughs> the work session. Trying to kind of yeah. lay the groundwork before yeah. mm -hmm. Dad came in for the, the yeah. hearing. So we certainly were um, fully informed even before the hearing. I think mm -hmm. it sounds like a, a good venture. I uh hope -huh. that we support this. The restaurant conditional use permit for the restaurant at 2150 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road, with all the conditions, the usual that you would expect. No drive-through. Yeah, I think specifically having the, the, the no. I mean, even though it's in the center, uh, still I think uh, that's right because uh, uh, if if something were to happen um, and he were look to move, uh, take one of the end spots yeah. like. Which he could do. Mm -hmm which you could do with like an AT&T type of thing. So I think, um, you know, the, the approval for this is for you no know, drive through. And then if uh, anything changed, certainly he'd have to come back before the board. And then as Linda said, it, as, then as Linda said, the normal, the normal, you know, conditions yep. for that uh, particular district and signage and things. And so did, did he say he was going to consolidate existing dumpsters? Uh, he, right now, there's only one dumpster area okay. for the site. So we can continue. Yeah, they're all okay. using the same dumpster. I know you at least implied that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that. yeah, yeah there's not much room for anything else. He did indicate one, one, one unit. only pay for one. Right. I can't blame for that. Okay. Okay. I second. Okay, so it's been moved and seconded. Uh, further discussion? Uh, anything additional uh, that we'll uh, you should? a resolution for you to review for the, prior uh, to the sixth. For the sixth. Okay, very good. Uh, uh, those in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, for an O. That'll bring us uh, to item D, uh, 2106 Five Mile Line Road, itinerant uh, vendor's license, uh, Mr. Costello. Yeah, that's one of the first ones we've done with the town board. Um, Alan Lori Brocklow had their public hearing as well on the 16th, requesting the ability to have a uh, mobile cart to sell flowers and produce. Uh, generally speaking, setting it up from Friday afternoon and taking it down on Saturday. Uh, throughout the summer months, generally from May 11th, and they've already received a temporary permit to allow that to happen, so they were in compliance, which I applaud them for doing, uh, and then going until about September 29th and then shutting the thing down. Uh, we did talk about the fact that they had actually started in the parking lot uh, because it was too wet to have it out in the front. Just a little nervous about putting it out in the grass area, uh, but if they want to try it and see how it goes, I'm sure Terry and Lindsay would probably be more concerned about losing their front yard if something happens there. Mm -hmm. It would probably put him back. But I guess I'd like to put some wording in there that in the event that there are some issues associated with, you know, lawn maintenance or, sure. or just something that might cause a problem for that to be there and not, not in, yeah, yeah, put it in the driveway and make it, you know, make it viable there if that's the case. But we'll let them try and see how it goes and if it doesn't work. I'm sure I will hear, hear from Terry and Lindsay about it. So. Okay. And like the restaurant we just discussed, um, Mr. Bercolo had come in for a work session um, yep. to explain to us what they were looking to do, and then we had the hearing. Okay. All right. Anything else uh, that uh, we should be aware of that we didn't um, hear either at work session or at the public hearing? The only thing is uh, they didn't really spend a lot of time talking about possible signage for the event, and I think I want to talk to them about it in a little more detail. I know they have an A-frame sign they want to put out there, which is fine. Which is fine. Uh, so but, can we have the license include the signage per yes, code, basically? Yes, absolutely right, yeah. I would move that we uh, grant the itinerant vendor's license at 2106 Five Mile Line Road for the 
um, plant and uh, farmer's market, I guess. Yeah, I, yeah, because I think that's what they said, plants, plants by spring, and then yeah. as the season goes. Uh, and the hours and the dates are? are uh, yes, the hours are kind of a resolution yeah. or something, or, or the license? Uh, yes, I'll incorporate them, and I've got to go back and just verify for them when exactly they're going to close it down. Yeah, so they're going to they're going to set up uh, Friday at uh, 2, 2 p.m. They're going to take it down Saturday, Saturday at 2. 2, 2 p.m. Okay. But, They'll run but that's from just, yeah, May, me. May 11th through uh, September 29th is what they're showing. Uh, on this on the application. Okay. I think I'll try to further embellish uh, when they're going to open up in the morning, that kind of thing. I think I think that would be good. Uh, I, it almost appears as though they're they're kind of running consistent to, with the business hours because I think uh, uh, the Williams uh, shut the business down in the afternoon. Yeah. Uh, they're not open all Saturday. I yeah. think they're open until uh, one or two o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. I'll verify that for the resolution for you. Great. Uh, there's been a motion on the table. Uh, there is a second. Uh, any additional discussion? Uh, nothing additional for the uh, for the record, Mr. Castello, on this? We're all set. Okay. Those in favor, aye. aye. Opposed? Uh, carried for all. Brings us to E, uh, sidewalk policy update. And uh, I won't steal any of Mr. Uh, uh, Valentine's uh, thunder. Uh, this is uh, something that he has been working on, and uh, this is at least the second or third draft that I've had an opportunity uh, to see. So with that, uh, Mr. Valentine, uh, please uh, lead, us, lead us through. Thank you. Um, this is uh, obviously something that uh, we've been talking about for a while as an update to this. Uh, if you can see on the main page, uh, this originally started back in 79, and we've had uh, different amendments along the way. Our last update was in 2000. Uh, so first and foremost, we kind of wanted to update, you know, what is the intent of the sidewalk policy. Um, as we've seen a lot of stuff, um, call it West Penfield, East Penfield. Um, so part of uh, the, the discussion is about the map. Uh, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but then just first working through the policy was um, this board sees a lot of waiver requests for East Penfield, and those are pretty generally approved as we go along. So just updating the intent is to kind of keep sidewalks on West Penfield at this point, not saying this policy can't be updated as, obviously as Penfield grows, um, but keep um, sidewalks on, on West Penfield, um, East Penfield at this point, there's really nothing else that we're tying into. So the first part of it was just kind of clarifying what the purpose of the policy is. Um, and then as we look at um, primary sidewalks, I ticked off the ones that were in that East Penfield area that really those are not um, the intent of one our sidewalk construction you know, nor high on the list of uh, you know developers list for that the second item is um, an update to the cost um, obviously we've updated fees we've updated other things as we go along it's been 18 years since the last update um, we've had that $500 waiver fee since 2000 so it's carried forward um, it really hasn't kept pace with current construction costs and the cost of materials. So updating the standard waiver fee, so in East Penfield, the standard waiver fee would go from, at least we're proposing, go from $500 to $1,000 per lot. Um, and then we can look at the map. Um, and then in West Penfield, we're looking at using kind of a spreadsheet to balance out, and that's kind of, I just printed out a sample one. And that was kind of the original intent as we got into the sidewalk policy as, as Jim can maybe chime in on was not to overly burden one developer to another was to kind of balance out the cost you know a developer that has a corner lot that's got two major road frontages plus internal you know has quite a bit of cost incurred versus somebody that may have 60 feet of frontage and then go internal they really don't have a lot of cost so we try to look at creating a standard spreadsheet that you know looks at and this one just happens to be water sign that's in front of you I have another example if you'd like to look at it. The number of lots, the number of feet of exterior, so basically the road, public road frontage, uh, the internal sidewalks, identifying whether it's residential or commercial, and then to keep it current, uh, we're looking to tie it to the county bid price. The county every year comes out with their standard bids for roads, curbs, gutters, all that, uh, tie it to that price so it kind of moves as it goes along, so you know, we not have to revisit it every year it calculates what the total compliance cost is. So if they did everything for this one, it's $152,000. Yeah. 
it doesn't mean that they get a waiver or whatever. If the board says, you know, put it in, they don't get a waiver, that would be their cost to put it in. We basically targeted 50% of the construction cost as the waiver fee. So obviously it's more than the $500, um, but then that money could go into another sidewalk somewhere else. I just have a few checks in here, just, you know, took $5,000 is kind of, is that a, a reasonable cost per lot is not to exceed that. And that's kind of our check just to make sure we're not overburdening one developer than another. So we kind of put 5,000 as our maximum per lot for residential, 10,000 for commercial. Um, the next one goes down to, is it in East Penfield? You know, which would automatically come up with $1,000 per lot. Um, and then basically summarizes what their cost would be. And then I just did another check at the end what the per lot is. So they're 3,600 um, going through a lot of them we've had recently and I sent the spreadsheet out. It's been averaging two to three thousand ish um, dollars for most of the, the subdivisions we've had recently. So, to me, that that's just kind of another check that you know, trying to keep everything fair across the board. We're not overburdening one developer than another, um, you know. But if they do get a waiver, you know, they're paying a sh uh, an appropriate share, and then that money would go back into the overall sidewalk budget for either repairs, um, new sidewalk construction. So when they go and look at this, are they going to immediately say, can I do it on one side of the, we you have it on both? I mean, this is, and obviously they're still going to come to the, the board here and, and request well, the waiver. Well, I mean, we can <coughs> the, yeah. you know, the spreadsheet and everything else. If yeah. they ask for a waiver, they would still have to may pay some fee mm -hmm. towards it, but it would be more than the $500. Um, you know, we're responsible for anything that happens in the Pettifield versus East Pettifield. Yeah. Yeah. At our current costs, a 100 foot wide lot would run you $3,600. So at 3675 a lineal foot, we're almost $4,000 and we're paying $500 for a waiver. So just trying to, you know, make that more of an equitable cost. Um, so that's kind of the, the yeah. first intent here. And I don't know if the board's got questions on that, um, but then the second is kind of the spreadsheet and then the map piece. I don't know I'm throwing a lot out there. Was the proposal is kind of that East Penfield piece, and we showed it east of 250, kind of outside what has been mixed use, outside of what is more the urbanized area. Was if the board is comfortable, we would have that as more of an administrative waiver process that would go through PRC if there is development out there. If PRC was didn't think it was necessary for a sidewalk in that area. Um, PRC could grant that waiver if there was a question at all, you know, we'd kick it back to this board. Um, but that may limit or you know, minimize some of those ones. You know, they come in frequently. Um, you know, in my memory, I can't remember you know, this board looking to put sidewalks out there. Obviously, oh. we don't have any. We show everything with the sidewalks that are in. Yeah. We, in still, right out we there. still ask for the easements, though. Right. Oh, we always take the easements. At some point, we take the waiver. We take the waiver fee. Um, take it, but you know, that just may. I think it would just be 441 just because you get the short fields there. It's kind of precarious anyway to try to walk on uh, Penfield Road when you get out. To and as we get development, if it's along 441, you know, obviously that would be something, if we saw a large development go out yeah. that way, you know, that's something, you know, PRC. You yeah. know, but every time we have a park, you, know, back to the board you want to have sidewalks go to the park, you want sidewalks to go to the schools. Yeah. We have that park out there, but it's not really walk down Penfield Road to get to it. I mean, at this point, we really don't have anything east of, of Dublin Road, so until we see some additional development, it's kind of hard to get to that, but, um, so those were kind of my three, or mm -hmm. PRC's three proposals, was first, um, the amendments to the, the policy is, is highlighted, second, you know, adoption of the, the worksheet or the, you know, the, the updated cost, and then third, you know, is the board comfortable with that? you know, PRC's administrative waiver of that East Penfield area, um, you know, that may minimize some of the, the demands on this board or some of those those waivers come to this board every every month, so. Unless you like those waivers. No, no. No, the only thing is up there, <laughs> Penfield like Road is my only, you know, what was that thing, I was, the other day I was talking to somebody about it, when he had Ashland Rise, and we were going to have going through that area a sidewalk that would take you over to Penfield Road. We looked at that, um, and that kind of followed the sewer line. And then the sewer line actually, they got more units in, in Fairport that relocated. The, the sewer line went the other way, so the sewer wasn't coming sewer through. So, so that kind of 
Okay. All came back to this board. Uh, Fell this off board, and this board, board re-reviewed that re and uh, basically said that, uh, you know, because the sewer had gone another way, we got the additional mm -hmm. units that uh, we did not, uh, we did not. Without have any other infrastructure right. in that area to run a, yeah. you know, a, basically you'd have to have an elevated walkway through. I mean, that uh, was it just makes me think that, that is something everywhere. that, not a sidewalk per se, was like a trail, but it was something that was in the East Penn field. Yep, we, and so that was right here. Right. So we still, we went around that um, with this line, so it shows, Dublin Road here shows that developed area, so we tried to show everything kind of east of that. So that would still come to that back to this board um, as it stands now, and try to write the policy. So if something came out here, there was a larger development, uh -huh. PRC, you know, could default back to this board. And, right. you know, I think that sounds fair. Yeah. Then we won't have to look at the sidewalk waivers. Right, I'm just out of curiosity: is there, are the, the the lots along the line are they actually defined? Just in case someone comes in and says, I live at X and it happens to be like that one as opposed to that one. I'm just curious if this is not everyone, but a lot of them surprisingly along that kind of north south line going north from Sweets Corners. Right. The property lines kind of do fall in that line. Um, so it did kind of run along a lot of property lines, and that's kind of how we picked it. It was, and I don't know why or, you know, Phelps and Gorham that fell under, but you know, as you look at it, this line yeah, through here kind of fell under a lot of property lines. Okay. This was a property. Obviously, we're splitting this one. This one fell on a property line. So it kind of, as you can see, some of the, the, the other ones here, there is kind of some natural or existing north-south lines. <coughs> if it falls on a line, obviously, you know, PRC can okay. always defer back to this board. Do as we, as I mean, fault. would you define it as, you know, latitude and longitude I mean is there any way that you define it or is it just this is the map and I mean we can put a dimension it's 500 feet or a thousand feet off of 250 I mean we can put some rough area to it but when in doubt would defer default back to this board is no I, came it, up as a I can appreciate that I'm just trying to provide something if there was a way to provide something within the policy that is pretty defined whereas you know if your property line is no, or really, no closer than a thousand feet off 250, or if you are I mean, we can rush on the east to side of yeah. Dublin Road, or, you know, just something to kind of just right. uh, okay. Because um, you theoretically could still have a lot of waiver requests coming in for right. that mm -hmm. section of town. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, no question. Yeah, and I mean, it, this by no means is going to eliminate sidewalk waiver requests. You know, there is still a lot of area you can see in kind of the northeast corner of that that's still mm -hmm. undeveloped. There is no sidewalks currently, um, but we kind of just tried to. Mm -hmm. say, take an easy approach of the easy line of there and east. We have no sidewalks within miles of that. You know, those seem pretty standard for that. And then anything, you know, west of that come back to this board. Obviously, we can see how this goes and, you know, amend the policy again. If 250 becomes the dividing line, anything east of 250, you know, is more of a, an admin waiver, um, you know, anything west of that. Yeah, I think this is, you know, you, you've um, put a lot of work into this because this is something that we've been discussing for over a year now not more um, as far as starting to conceptualize something that would make a little bit less administrative <laughs> burden on everyone's part so I can certainly appreciate that um, yeah and I, I you know I agree with Linda that you know 15 years down the road you know, 10 15 years as you know, if East Penfield does start to develop how the state is going to start to look at you know 441 or how they're going to start to look at Atlantic I mean we can't predict so, <coughs> um, because you know you never know what's going to happen just on the east side of Penfield, you know, the county sure. line. So I, I would say that, you know, the delineation we have is, is probably good for, you know, today. Probably can guide us through the next comprehensive plan, you know, as a, as a good working document. And, um, you know, moving forward. I, I would like, though, I know this is under an action item, but I would like to at least have an opportunity to kind of read this through more than just tonight. So Of course. Yeah, um, I just wanted the opportunity to go through with the board as oh, okay. walk you through it if you wanted to see other examples. I sent you the, the spreadsheet. I have other examples of kind of the breakdowns. Um, and if you want to look at that, if you want to go through the policy, um, you know, but just wanted to you know, get it out there, have some discussion on it. Um, obviously, you know, happy to come back at the next work session and have further yeah, we discussion can, if we can wants uh, to talk we about can put, uh, put this uh, for tonight. Uh, we can. Uh, hold the matter, table yep. the matter for tonight. 
and then uh, bring it back uh, uh, at our next uh, uh, meeting, which will be the 13th of uh, June. Uh, we can have that back as, uh, as an action. And then in between now and then, if uh, the board has any questions, wants to see some additional examples as uh, Mark has put together uh, or anything like that, uh, you know, please uh, please let Mark uh, know and uh, he can get that, uh, that pushed out. Yep. So, all right. All right. Uh, so, um, I'll, I'll make a motion to table. Okay. okay. Um, any further discussion uh, or any further uh, items that you might need for market uh, this, at this point? No. Okay. Uh, so, uh, those uh, in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. So, for all, uh, it is uh, tabled. Um, that uh, brings us uh, to the end of our um, agenda items uh, for action, uh, guest action, and uh, information. And uh, no, being no further business to come before the board, uh, the May 23rd, 2018 meeting will stand adjourned at uh, 7.41 p.m. Thank you, staff. Um, thank you, PCTV. Thank you, board.